Wearing the best clothing and the flowers in the bride's hand and they are kissing each other. Hallelujah. The best clothing. Oh, that is so vital. Just right there, I can actually start teaching, you know. That's not part of the Big Ten. But as I was just looking at that very picture, I think to myself, you know, how important it is that when uh, you are married, that you still look the best for each other. Still, You still need to dress appropriately, nice hairdo, haircut, a nice, you know, facial uh, makeup or expressions or, you know what I'm saying, uh, keep yourself well groomed, uh, keep, uh, you know, the man and, and keep yourself absolutely in top shape. Because don't forget, everybody goes out, or most, uh, on a job. And there are secretaries, there are other men, and uh, we don't want to come home to somebody who looks all raggedly dressed and who looks like the back of a bus, <laughs> okay? All right, now, let's start off with the Big Ten, and I trust you are ready, okay? Number one that threatens a marriage in, you know, among the Big Ten we're just going to go through them in different order. Uh, money. The root of all evil is uh, not money, but the love of money. I want you to say that after me. The root of all evil is not money, but the love of money. You see, uh, money is not a tool to be used uh, to buy someone's uh, approval. Otherwise, you're going to have to keep doing that with money, all right? Now, uh, there should be no secrets with the income between two people who are married. For Jesus said, a man shall leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife, singular. Uh, there's no ownership when it comes to money, okay? There should be no dishonesty. And uh, remember, money is uh, not a weapon to keep your wife under. And money is not a possession to be doled out, okay, as to a child for good behavior. Uh, money is no subst substitution for expressing uh, your personal love one to another. So just keep that balance of money. So that's number one, all right? Now number two that threatens a marriage is sex. Ah, oh, did he say sex? Yes, sex is lovely. Uh, oh, how can you say that? Because God made sex. And anything that God makes is perfect, yes. But it's how we go about uh, uh, the uh, topic or the relationship between husband and wife about sex. Sex is beautiful, delightful. It is necessary. It is an expression of oneness. Okay, he unites himself, you know. Uh, with a, a man or a woman sexually, you become one. In other words, whatever that individual has in the spirit or in the flesh will be, there's a transfer of, a, 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 of goods during that intimacy. And uh, so watch out that you don't, you know, if you're outside of marriage, don't just have sex with anybody. You know, sex is really a, a reserve for marriage. But uh, prostitutes, for instance, you know, they have sex with various uh, men. And you can see that they are used and all that rejection and abuse and low self-esteem, all that is imparted to them or to vice versa. And uh, 
you find uh, that they forever needing deliverance because there's an impartation, all right? Okay, now sex uh, is a complete self-giving. Sex is a sacred obligation. Sex is a sacred obligation. You don't hold back sex because your spice, uh, your spouse has now upset you. Oh, I've got a headache. No, maybe it's time for us uh, or for the men to say, okay, honey, uh, it reminds me of that little sense of humor. The husband saying to the wife, uh, hey, I've got two disciplines for you or two leaves like in America. And the wife says, no, I've got no headache. Good, he says. Good. No headache? Wonderful. <laughs> okay. So sex is not a weapon to dominate each other. Sex is also <clears throat> not a reward for good behavior. You don't hand sex out and say, oh, well, because you have behaved well, now I can let you get closer to me. No, no, no. That's a manipulation. Sex is not a reward. Sex is something that belongs to both you and your partner. In fact, the Apostle Paul says in the Bible, uh, when you fast, okay, and you agree to separate, don't do it for too long, okay? So that neither can be tested in any unnecessary way. So, uh, because a man's body does not belong to himself, nor a woman's body. You belong now to each other. Okay, so each one finds uh, fulfillment, all right, each finds fulfillment in a sexual relationship. It's important to please each other and to complete each other's desires, okay? And uh, so, all right, I think that's it. I don't think we need to elaborate more on that. Now, number three. There are 10. Number three, what threatens a marriage it could be children. Why children? Both parents bear a responsibility for each child. You must understand that. The mother and the father, you are a team. The one cannot be a disciplinarian and the other one just a lover because that confuses the child and will cause the child to develop a split loyalty. In other words, to, towards a disciplinarian.